Hey, you. Yeah, you with the face. Hey, I heard you like some land battles. That's good, my friend. I got a good one for you today, but better yet, I got news for you where you can get your own high-quality land battles for yourself. That's right, folks. This is a Vermin League replay from Cool Umbrella versus Lenorm, two regular uh, submitters of replays on this particular channel. Of course, a lot of those replays you guys have been seeing, and I haven't really highlighted too much, that's on me, is the fact that a lot of these are coming from the Vermin League, which is, of course, a land battle ladder. Community hosted by the YouTuber Human Boy, yes, yes, on his Discord. Uh, he's hence the Vermin League. And it's played using the Fruit Rules Tournament rule set. So if you guys want structured land battles with a ranking system, uh, you know, and having a rule set that guarantees you won't get like corner campers or draw kiters or some of the other things you run into on quick battles, uh, you know, land battle, quick battles, just regular queue in game, right? Um, so definitely go check it out if you guys want to get some nice land battles. Very fun, good games there. A lot of, a lot of great folks playing games there. So let's go ahead and take a look. We've got this Lizardman versus High Elves game. Uh, love the chocolate color scheme here. What rock in the white? Cool umbrella coming in with red crested skink chief. He's got some horned ones, feral cold ones, rev crystal for healing. Lots of skink cohort plus javelins. Uh, and Cohort of Sotek in the back. More Red Crest, uh, Skink Priest of Beast, and Feral Cold Ones and Cold One Riders out here as well. For the High Elves, they've gone with a staunch double line of spears, one front, one back, consisting of Spearmen and Silver and Guard mixed. Looks like Silver and Guard in the front with some Swordmasters on the right flank in the honor position. We've also got a line of Sisters of Avalorn, one of them is optioned out for the archers with light armor regiment around here giving extra weakness to fire so they can focus fire on targets very effectively but so far they're just kind of advancing here and right off the bat cool umbrella is going to be moving in for the kill with his javelins these squishy sisters of avalorn definitely do not want to be eating these very cheap skink cohort javelins straight to the face because they will do an alarming amount of damage let's see here Archers with light armor, of course. Light armor will maybe help them a little bit, will it? No, actually, they absolutely get destroyed. I mean, it's like an extra 20 armor, guys. So, anyway, we see a little bit of healing here in the center on this one sister of Avalorn. A little bit of apotheosis or regrowth, actually. Wow, big expensive heal. I, I forgot. That's the heal that Teclis has got. Makes sense. The Swordmasters also move in and just evaporate some skinks. Like 200 skinks just die instantly, which is an absolute tragedy, but uh, the... Blank attack here, timing of the Cold One Riders and uh, Feral Cold Ones here is a little bit late. Uh, you would need, uh, ideally, you would want those cavalry to be in here, kind of shooting these gaps and outmaneuvering while the front lines engage. You probably could have mopped up some of these archers and actually routed them off, potentially. As it is right now, though, we get a nice net on these Horned Ones. Rev Crystal to try and counteract that focus fire, but uh, right now, of course... Teclis taking great advantage here. Lenorm doing a good job with the fire synergy. Kindle Flame on Net of Amontok with lots of fire damage on those Sisters of Avalorn and the Talons, of course. But uh, Skinks are fast. One of the best things about Skinks is that they are quite fast. They can continue to pressure. And the High Elves can still fire to a degree while they're fighting in melee. They're in guard mode and you issue an order, focus fire on them. But even still... Not like the Skinks would necessarily win out. I mean, even just the regular uh, kind of archers, but especially Sisters of Avalorn have high enough stats that the Skinks aren't actually going to trade that great against them. But the nice thing is they can, like I said, keep them bogged down as much as possible, kind of interrupt them. And, you know, if the target moves out of range and they lose their attack order, or if whoever is microing these archers is not on point, which it looks like Lenorm definitely is right now, uh, can lead to issues, but now the cavalry is in place. Cold One Spear Riders dropping in. And uh, let's see, where's that? Lizard Lord get off to. I'm not really paying too close attention to him, which I definitely should be, but looks like we're throwing some Flocks of Doom here as well. Let's check the spell loadout. We do have Curse of Honor Air, which I'm a huge fan of in this matchup. High Elves, generally high stats. Uh, it's good to counteract that with that big AoE debuff. But anyway, there he is. Red Crest Skink Chief. He's got his Potion of Strength was active momentarily to juice up his weapon strength. 
But uh, now he's just, you know, back to regular stats. Even still, 65 attack, bonus versus large, over 400 weapon strength, the Frenzy active. Can definitely take down Teclis, no problem if you can catch him. Teclis is much faster, though. If he can get away, that will obviously be a big benefit. And it looks like here we are going to get a big first Von Rare. So notice all these high elf units here. I mean, Teclis stats already aren't amazing, but it's down to 14, 16. And uh, yeah, terrible year, probably, I would imagine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if I had to guess in world history. But anyway, yeah, the Spearman 2 down to 0 melee attack, 26 melee defense. So the Red Crest making much better contact against them. The Swarm of Skinks is also doing a good job of mopping up a lot of units. But notice how these Sisters of Avalorn are still free. And the Swordmasters taking some armor piercing damage. But again, their high leadership, high stats will mean they'll hang around just fine into the late game. Um, but yeah, we are start starting to see a little bit of shattering here. One thing that is a little bit tough about utilizing the Feral Colons, right now they're not enraged, but like, even this small unit just peppering in here a little bit, yeah, you need to go chase them off if possible. But at the same time, um, the Feral Cold ones, it's not like you can do that very well with them because oftentimes they enrage, so you can't necessarily pick the targets. Sometimes they'll chase stuff off, which is really nice. Sometimes they yellow into spears, which is the opposite of what you want, but kind of a price you pay there. If you do have Cold Blooded, uh, utilizing it on them is a good uh, good idea, but anyway. Techless here is still just trying to avoid the angry lizards, utilizing his spears great. To screen there. The horned one's also being sustained by that rev crystal. If they can stay alive through the late game, that rev crystal will uh, you know, give get them back up to strength. There's quite a bit of healing cap space left, but it does take time. There's not nearly as much burst as there was, was at one short point in time. I think maybe never actually went live how it was in early access but still quite a potent heal on that rev crystal but again you need to get quite a few uses out of it we'll see right now the terror at least and the tank of course is quite nice still bonds very heavy armor decent hp for the cost of course sisters of avernor decent armor piercing damage but even still you know that non-ap damage does matter a little bit but uh, Lizard Cavalry definitely doing a nice job cleaning up with the Silveren Guards. Man, two Silveren Guards still very healthy here. One of them's got a regrowth as well. They've got 112 models online. And that that Vigor refresh, all these Lizards are exhausted. They're going to be having a much harder time against those Silveren Guard. But let's see how it shakes out in the long run. Swordmasters also getting cleaned up by the Horned Ones. Great job there by the Lizards. Keeping those units routing as much as possible. And more Feral Cold ones moving in. Those Silver and Guards, though, just so staunch. And uh, as I know too well, it doesn't take much to get your you know, armor-piercing, horse-sized, monstrous Cav Lord uh, stuck up in those Elf Spears. Can die, maybe not in so much of a hurry against Silver and Guard as, say, like Azrai Spears. Ask me how I know. Um, but anyway, nice Flock of Doom. The thing is, the Flock of Doom actually is going to be much less effective against the Silver and Guard. Given its relatively low damage output, the fact they have 30% spell resistance anyway. I don't know the Winds of Magic situation. Unfortunately, I cannot see them. But, um, yeah, it might be worth it to just save Winds for another Curse of On Rare if possible. Um, yeah, but right now, this Red Crest of Skink Chief is just getting ground down by the Spears. All the Skink's leadership just kind of fell apart there. And the uh, Lizard Cavalry as it is, is just continuing to get peppered down by these small regrouped units. I mean, a few of those Sisters of Avalon got chased off there, but a lot of them regrouping, and those Silver and Guards just so healthy still. There's that Curse of On Rare, maybe a little bit late as the Lord routes off, but it's uh, it's an interesting situation for sure. Definitely great job by both players, nice back and forth there. Good plays on both sides, and ultimately I think, you know, uh, it's tough. This type of a build, potentially, because the lizards don't have a great, like, anti-infantry infantry, right? Like, you could spam Saurus, but they're not going to be terribly efficient against this. Like, Red Crests are okay, but they really... I mean, with Cursor on Rare, and uh, arguably, I think, maybe you bring the Saurus Old Blood over the Red Crest here, just because he has better support abilities. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but... Um, uh, I think you need his support abilities to get past the high elf stats. Kind of gives you like a second uh, Curse of Honor more or less around the the old one 
uh, old, old blood, whatever. <laughs> anyway, the Horned Ones, despite taking a nasty initial focus, did end up getting a little bit of value back at the end of the day, but the Lizard Cavalry, it's interesting, you know. Uh, a lot of it is quite cost-effective, the Feral Cold Ones especially, and like these Skinks with their Javelins, man, 900 value on a couple of Skinks is super cost-effective. Three Skinks, wow. More than double their value, up to 900 with the Javelins there. Levy Freeman Skinks. For the win and of course the regular skin cohort do trade fairly effectively yeah it's, it's tough though i mean the lizard cavalry i'm a big fan of in a lot of matchups but the high elves is a little bit awkward because of that those you know the staunch spears and uh the fact that high elf cavalry stats is pretty decent um unlike the empire where you know the the even the regular Cold One Riders trade one-to-one -one into, like, Reichsguard and Empire Knights super efficiently, right? Like, you don't even necessarily need to take the Cold One Spear Riders, but against High Elves, you have, like, Dragon Princes, who their stats are high enough that the, like, relatively low attack and defense of the Cold One Riders ends up costing you quite a bit. So it's harder to prepare exactly, you know, cavalry engagements, what to do. You know, Silver Helms you can trade cost-effectively with, but, again, um... Isle's leadership does come into play there. Man, those Silver and Guard definitely carry a lot of value. Swordmasters do all right as well. The Archers, only one ends up getting really good value. The others are kind of distraction pieces or, you know, bait for Javelins. But, hey, I guess, guess they soaked up that damage. And then, yeah, just the Staunch Spears, honestly. So, um, thinking about things for the Lizards here. Again, we'll go to the Lord real quick for... The generic combat lords i do like the red crest his anti-large bonus um like he's uh in terms of having a uh, combat stats let's actually compare here and math it out so if we come to second lizard men and let's grab the red crest here let's put him on a comparable mount so we'll do the horned one mount and let's go just base price base stats and then we'll factor in abilities of oh, crocgar Right, buddy. We do love Crocard too, but let's be honest. Uh, in a competitive multiplayer sense, definitely these two are better. So already we see the Red Crest is cheaper, which does give him a point in his favor. Stats are pretty close. The Soros Old Blood does have 800 more HP, which is pretty considerable. 30 extra armor, 10 extra leadership, a bit slower, um, and less attack, more melee defense, more weapon strength, a little bit less charge. Of course, the Red Crest also comes with Frenzy, so keep that in mind. That attack difference is going to uh, get even more accentuated, right? The Red Crest is going to have even more of an offensive profile. Also carries Poison on himself, which gives him essentially like a 25% uh, ward save in melee, more or less, right? Or 15%, rather. Um, so... Just some considerations there. 30 bonus versus large as well on that weapon strength isn't quite enough to equal it out um, versus a large target, but it definitely does help in the right direction. And again, offensively, you get a lot more melee attacks. So against something like uh, Tyrion, he's likely to get more hits, but I think the lower HP really ends up costing you anything in the long run. And then if we come in and look at the support abilities, starting with the Red Crest, I mean... He really doesn't have a lot in terms of AoE support. You've got this uh, AoE Stops Rampage, which I guess if you're going with the Mask Clever Girls, it's nice to have. It's kind of a, like a cool utility. But in my opinion, it's much more um, sensible to just go with this guy. He's got Horn of Kygor, which is a melee attack charge bonus buff. Again, directly synergizes with those Lizard Cavalry again. And just generally, like I said, combined with Stand Your Ground, essentially gives you a second Curse of Onrair. Um, you know, having both these big AoE melee attack, melee defense debuffs to really nerf the high elf stats and help your skinks trade much more efficiently um, you know, over the long run. And then, of course, also has Amulet of Itzel. Really nice insurance policy since you don't have a lot of healing. You do have the Rev Crystal, but you don't necessarily want to be using it on your characters. Um, this gives you a one-time use 60% ward save. You know, if you get netted by tech list, just pop this and he will survive, definitely. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But personally, I mean, I like the Red Crest. He's fun. But the Soros Old Blood is just so good for what you need in this matchup. Hard to pass him up. 
you do like this sort of content, though, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.